path of contact. <clears throat> Excuse me, yeah. Um, look, our plan was to uh, to get a scrimmage in. Um, we were able to do that. I thought we got a lot of work done. Um, we probably got through about eight different roles. We uh, implemented the, the kicking game throughout. Um, I thought we handled the heat pretty well. And there'll be a lot of film for us to watch now and get on with our players. Um, overall, you know, it's not until you watch the tape. There were some good things, some things, obviously, that, that we'll need to be better at. Um, but I thought it was good work this morning. John, could you talk about the day for DJ Sparinger and what you've seen about uh, from him overall? He seems like he had a good day today. Yeah, look, he's a veteran player. Um, I feel like I know the player well. We've played against him at, at a couple of teams. You know, he was at Washington. He was at Arizona. He's someone that uh, can do a, a number of things. Um, I think, you know, he's he's someone that's helping us in the kicking game as well. So his versatility, uh, obviously his football IQ, all of those things are positives for us. I think he's a, a real good run player and uh, – so I, I've kind of been encouraged with the camp he's having. And, uh, you know, I, I think football is real important to him. Sean, a lot of times between seasons one and two, obviously you see growth in a player. Uh, are you seeing the growth that you guys want to see out of CJ? Say it again. I said a lot of times between uh, seasons one and two, you see a lot of growth in a player. Are you seeing the growth you're hoping to see out of CJ? Yeah. Uh, look. He's played mostly in the in the nickel. We've kind of moved him around. He has he has strong safety flex. He's dime flex. Um, I think he's a good athlete. He's got good ball skills. So uh, yeah, I think he's going to continue to to obviously get more and more work and uh, and be an important part of what we're doing defensively. So I've been encouraged. Sean, what's your assessment of the backup quarterbacks at this point in camp? Are they where you want them to be or expected them to be at this point? Well, they're never where you want them to be. You know, you're always, as a coach, wanting more and more. I think they're, they're two different type players, and yet uh, I really like the room. Uh, I think, uh, obviously, Taysom um, gives us a, a different type of threat at that position, and I think Jameis has come in and picked things up very quickly, and, uh, you know, he's had a few. This last week for him has been really positive. So um, I'm encouraged with, uh, with, with their work. Uh, I think it's a good room overall. And uh, I feel like we've got some versatility at that position. P. Rob has seemed to have uh, a few good practices, good start to camp. What have you seen from him? Well, he's turned the ball over a few times for us and taken it away. Uh, you know, he's he stayed healthy. Uh, he's a real good foot athlete. He can run. And uh, I, I would say your observations are correct. Uh, I think he's he's playing pretty well. Sean, how long was he died? With Taysom Hill, it, it seems like every summer he gets these four weeks, six weeks to play quarterback and install as a quarterback. When do you turn the calendar and say, all right, now we got to prepare you to be playing all those other roles that you're going to play? Well, look, he's playing those other roles in the kicking game right now. And, uh, you know, when he when he goes in and plays some of the F-force, you know, we kind of evolve into what we want to do each week by game plan. Um, he's very smart and he understands the overall scheme. So... Uh, you know, we'll slowly have a, an install plan relative to how we see him fitting in when he's not a quarterback. But he's, he's playing in the, the kicking game units just like he always has. And, uh, you know, he provides a lot of versatility. Have you seen... I'm sorry? Thing in particular in his development is one month is all you really get to really... Yeah, look, he, he, he's got a real good grasp as to what we're doing offensively. You know, we keep keep pushing the tempo, but, um, you know, he understands our protections well. And, and I, I think that, uh, you know, with the, with the reps that, he, that he's getting, the reps that James are getting, you know, all of those things, you know, we're, we're building on, making corrections. Um, so it's, it's a process with those guys. Sean, would you Sean? say it's almost surprising a little bit how – quickly Sheldon Rankins um, has sort of returned and looks quick again. Would you say you're at all surprised by that? I'm sure if, if so, it's a pleasant surprise. Agreed? Yeah, look, I, I think so. And yet, I think realistically, back in the winter when we're projecting when players will be healthy and when we see them being able to, 
to be in uh, technically full go. This this was uh, expected. Uh, he's someone that is is a tireless worker. Um, he spent a lot of time in his recovery and rehab here, and uh, you know, uh, it's I'm encouraged to see him move around because you know he's he's a a big plus for us inside, not only versus the run, but particularly you know in the passing situations. Can, can I follow? Can I follow up on the defensive line um, and just talk about the depth there? I mean, you signed a guy like Marcus Hunt who's been in the league for a long time, and I guess potentially how difficult cuts could be because you have so much depth and, and, and seemingly a lot of talent there. Yeah, I, I would agree. I, I think we're a little deeper there than we have been in in, in recent years or really for the most part since since I've been here. Um, you know, it's helped us because we're, we're, we're playing a lot of players throughout the course of the game. Um, and I think Ryan and, and that group over on the defensive side of the ball have really done a good job of developing those guys. Um, you know, we're seeing a number of the younger players come on. Trey Hendrickson's playing well. Carl Granderson's playing well. Um, you know, we've added a few few guys that have come in here and, and not only on the inside but on the outside. Uh, Roach, the young players, uh, had a good camp. Um, you know, so... Uh, those are good problems to have, and, and we'll see how this thing unfolds here in two weeks. Sean, is, is Jameis uh, James Mark Troutman's blocking ability kind of held up the way you, you, uh, you guys were, were thinking it would? Say that again. Is Adam Troutman's blocking ability kind of held up the way you, you all thought it would? Yeah, look, he, he's working on that. I, I would say he's probably a little further along in the passing game, and yet, uh, man, he's he's grinding on, on these installs. I think he, he's a, a good study. Um, and so a lot of that is, is time on task and, and, uh, you know, we see improvement each day. So, uh, I've been encouraged with the camp he's had. Sean, is, is Jameis more aggressive than the other quarterbacks and going down the field? It all seems like maybe he goes down a little more than the other two. Uh, you know, I don't know. I, he's made some plays down the field. He's, he's certainly confident with his arm strength. He's got exceptional arm talent. Um, he's done a good job, I think, working in the pocket, and and, and I see someone who's uh, athletic enough to climb and, and make some of those funny body throws. Um, but he's also, you know, understood and stayed within the the offense that we're running. Um, you know, and, and so I, I, a lot of it's his confidence level, and not only the play, but the receivers outside. Hey, Sean, what do you guys think? When you guys are evaluating him, is it more you're looking at his decision than like complete and complete? Like, what, what's that? Is it just day by day you want to see he's making better, better decisions? Look, it's all the above. You know, where's he going? Uh, is it the right decision? You know, what's a, what's his feet look like? His mechanics look like? And then, you know, how, how well is he doing it? The first job for that position is to move the ball and, and get the team in the end zone. And, and so you're evaluating every part of that. Y'all are in the tomorrow. He had enough time. I'm sorry. Y'all are, in the dome, y'all are in the dome tomorrow. What are you looking to get out of that? Just getting used to tomorrow will be really getting uh, a feel for the turf. You know, every year they lay a new turf in there. Um, you know, there's a mixture of rubber and sand. Um, sometimes it's a little too spongy. Sometimes maybe a little firm. So the first time we're in there, uh, we're having a practice, but you're also getting used to the footing. And then there's enough time between that practice and when we practice again next week um, for them to add one or the other, roll it some more, um, you know, so it's it's really the footing. Uh, and then obviously the lighting and, and all the other elements that some of these guys haven't experienced yet. Is it a big setback for Ruiz to not be able to play today just because of the amount of team you did when there's not that much time left to get those reps? Yeah, I, he'll be fine. I, I think that, look, we're, we're dealing with a player that's very smart. And, uh, you know, he'll be back very quickly and, and – you know, getting the work again. Obviously, you'd love to have all of your players out there, um, but it's just the way it is. Do you see Malcolm Jenkins coming back this week? It's what sure was injury related. Yeah, at some at some goal. point. Yeah, at some point, you definitely. Sean, when you design stuff for a guy like Deontay Harris as a play caller or a play designer, I know this sounds goofy, but for you, is that fun to try to come up with ways to get him the ball in space? Do you enjoy that part of you know play designing? I, I think all of us we we enjoy the part where where it works in a game. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it, look, it's it's our job, and it, it is fun. Um, but you're trying to come up with different ways that fit what we're doing, 
And then when it comes to fruition on a Sunday, uh, yeah, I think anytime as a teacher you, you see one of your students do well, uh, that's, that's why you do it. Would it be safe to say that Deontay gives you sort of a unique package to work with? Maybe you haven't had anybody quite like him before. Would, that, would you agree with that? Yeah, I, I, we've had a few other you know, unique players, but I would agree with you. Uh, he's got a skill set that, that uh, obviously gets us excited, and, and we can build on it, and, and I would agree with you. Sean, is there our, more of our, an emphasis on finding, uh, finding players like, like CJ who can, who can do a lot of things defensively and play a lot of different positions? Are, are you finding maybe more of those players now than a couple of years ago? Yeah, look, I think there's a little bit more pressure on the defenses to find guys that can cover in man and, and, and play in the nickel, play in the dime. Um, you know, people say it's a passing league, and, and part of that's true. Uh, obviously, you've got to be able to tackle and, and play the run well. Um, but, but his versatility is an asset, certainly. Sean, are Taysom and Jameis competing to be the number two quarterback, or you liked the setup last year where... Jameis could go into a game if needed, so Taysom could be playing that other role on a on a game. Look, they're the, number one. They're always competing, Mike. I mean, every every practice and uh, the roles that they'll have for us on game day uh, will be determined. And uh, and and yet every practice out here, th these guys are trying to put their best foot forward and and improve. All right, thank you, guys.